Today is the day, guys. I have finally finished my AR pistol build. I think it turned out awesome. And we're gonna go over everything we put on this gun, all the parts we decided to use, and we're gonna do that in just a minute. All right, guys, welcome back to the Pilot Patriot channel. And yes, we did finally finish the AR pistol build. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that we've done reviews on a lot of the stuff that we've put onto this pistol. So as we're going through this, if you want some more information on individual parts, I will put links to those videos in the description below. This has been a long time in the making. Like a lot of you guys, I kind of buy my parts a little bit at a time and just assemble it as I go. And we have finally finished it. The only thing we're missing now is a suppressor. And that's just because we're waiting on old Uncle Sam to approve it. So I have done a video on how to build a $400 AR-15. That was the ultimate budget rifle video. This is not that video. Now what I tend to do is I kind of shoot for the middle of the road type products when I'm building out something like this. I don't always go for the top of the line most expensive thing you can get because a lot of times I don't think it's worth it. But I also definitely wouldn't call this a budget build by any means. So stick with me guys, we're gonna get in here and take a close look at every part we put on here and why. But before we do that, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell and give us a big thumbs up that helps us with that YouTube algorithm because a video like this is definitely not getting monetized. All right guys, now let's get in here and take a closer look at this pistol. First, we're gonna take a look at some of the main components. We did go with an Aero Precision receiver set. This is the M4E1 Aero Precision upper and lower. Aero Precision is a good reputable name brand and I think you're getting a lot of good quality as well as some really nice aesthetics with that Aero Precision receiver set. Going up here to our bolt carrier group, again from Aero Precision, this is their nickel boron bolt carrier group. And for our charging handle, we're using the Radian Raptor SD. That's because we do plan on suppressing this pistol in the future. And what's cool about that Radian Raptor SD is that it has side ports that allow that gas to escape from the sides rather than blowing back into your face when you have a suppressed rifle or especially a pistol with a short barrel. Going down to our trigger, we have the Franklin Armory BFS3 binary trigger. So you'll notice that we do have a third position on our selector switch there. That is for binary mode. And I have done a full review and test of that Franklin Armory trigger. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it right here at the top of the screen. You also notice here that I do have the Magpul bad lever. If I can, I always go with the bad lever on most of my AR-15s just out of convenience. For my barrel, I went with the Ballistic Advantage BA Hansen 11.3 inch barrel. I think that's a good size for a pistol. You get a little bit better ballistics than the short 10.5, but you still keep it at a nice manageable length. And if you're not aware of Ballistic Advantage, they make some of the best AR-15 barrels on the market right now, especially their BA Hansen line. Moving on to my grip, I just kept it simple with a Magpul MOE grip. Let's move on up here to the front of the pistol. And don't forget, guys, as we're going over all this stuff, I'm going to have links to everything in the description below if you want to get it for yourself. So looking here at our handguard, this is the Midwest Industries M-Lock Combat Rail. For those of you looking to get a size comparison with that 11.3 inch barrel, this is the 10 and a half inch handguard. And as you can see, it's gonna run right up to the back of your muzzle device if you have the 11.3 inch barrel. While we're up here looking at this muzzle device, like I said, I'm gonna be suppressing this pistol and the suppressor that I'm going with is the Yankee Hill Machine Turbo K. This is the muzzle brake that comes with the Turbo K. I really like the ratcheting system that comes with this. And what you saw here, is the blast shield from Yankee Hill Machine that attaches the same way their suppressors do. You just put it on, give it a twist, and it ratchets into place. That's gonna keep some of that noise and that concussion going forward rather than back towards you or to the sides, pissing off all your friends beside you on the range. 
looking back at the hand guard, I did go with the Magpul hand stop. I think it comes in right at the perfect position here. And this comes in a hand stop kit, so it comes with a few different accessories. You can kind of arrange that in any way you want, so that's cool. And it does attach to your M-Lock rail. Right here on the side, you'll notice that I have the Strike Industries M-Lock rail covers. I have that on both sides. This is going to give you a little more comfortable area where your hand rests on that hand guard. For my light, I have the Streamlight Protac Rail Mount HLX. This is a thousand lumen. I have done a full review of this as well, and I'll put a link to that here at the top of the screen. Now, one thing you may notice is that this light originally comes with a Picatinny rail mount, and I have swapped that out for the Arasaka inline M lock rail mount. Gets it in a little bit tighter and closer to your handguard. You can see how long this inline rail mount from Arasaka is, where I can effectively push this light all the way out to here once I get that suppressor on there if I want to. You'll notice that light also comes with the front tape switch here, and I have the cables just routed in here through that tape switch mount, and I just keep it all organized with some Ranger bands. Looking up here at the front sight, this is the fixed front sight post from Midwest Industries. I really like the way this looks, and I like the functionality of always having my front sight there. Some guys like it, some guys don't. If you don't like the fixed front post, you could always go with some Magpul folders. While we're on sights, let's go back here to the rear sight. We have the Magpul Inbus Pro, just a nice flip up backup sight. I like how low profile the Pro version of their sights are, so that's why I went with that one, and it fits nicely underneath my magnifier here. Moving on to optics, like we just mentioned, this is the Vortex Micro 3x magnifier. Just flips right there out of the way. It's going to give you three times magnification on your red dot. I just like having the option of being able to go magnified if I need to for further out shots. And I really love the way this Vortex magnifier functions. You just flip it out of the side. There's no buttons to push or anything like that. It's just held in with friction and you just push it in and out of the way whenever you need to. Moving on up, this is the Holosun 515CM Red Dot. This is one of the nicer options from Holosun. You get pretty much everything Holosun has to offer. You get the shake wake technology, you get the solar panel, the flip caps, you get the QD mount, and I just think this is a great value for your money here. And I have done a review on both the Red Dot and the magnifier. If you wanna check that out, I'll try to get a link to that right here at the top of the screen. Coming on back, we're gonna take a look at the pistol brace. Most of you guys are gonna recognize this. This is the SB Tactical SBA3 pistol brace. It is fully adjustable and functional. I just really like the way this thing looks. I like the way it feels. And one thing that really helps out with that is this aftermarket strap that I put on here. This is from Lunar Concepts. This is their split fix. And what you'll notice here is that as that strap comes around, it has an additional strap that goes through here and kind of tightens up that split that you get in the SBA3 and keeps it a lot more rigid so that you're not having to worry about that SBA3 getting out of whack like you normally would. You'll also notice here that we do have the Law Tactical folding stock adapter. I've also done a video on that. You'll see a link to that in the description below. This is the last video that we did. I'm really a big fan of that Law Tactical folder. I like the idea of being able to fold this up and really shorten the overall length of my pistol when I'm storing it or transporting it. I think that just comes in handy. And it's also about a 10 on the cool factor. Now one thing to mention with the Law Tactical folder, they do have a QD sling mount here on the bottom, but that's really kind of a horrible position because of where your hand is gonna lay on that grip. And typically I go with the Magpul ASAP plate back here on the back. The problem with the ASAP plate is because it sticks out so far on the sides, it wouldn't allow me to fully fold the stock. So instead of the Magpul ASAP, I went with this slap plate here. I will link to that in the description below. That's made by a company called I Kick Hippies. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for my AR pistol build. I'm really loving this thing. 
I am totally satisfied with everything that I've decided to put on here. If you guys have any suggestions or any questions, make sure you leave those down in the comment section below. I always like to hear from you guys. What do you like? What do you not like about this build? Not that that's really going to matter because I like it and it works for me. And that's really all that matters. If any of you guys are in the process of building your own AR-15s or building your own pistol, I hope this video has helped you out and given you some cool ideas of where you can go with that. I have reviewed and tested everything that's on this rifle over the last few months, and I fully endorse and stand behind all of it. Don't forget, guys, I'm going to have links to everything, everything you see here. I will have links in the description below, so make sure you go check those out. And if you want to help support the channel in other ways, you can follow us on Patreon. You can also visit Pilot Patriot Apparel. Get yourself some cool Second Amendment and patriotic t-shirts. And don't forget, guys, we are also over on Rumble. The more and more I do these types of videos, the more I realize I need to have a backup plan because YouTube does not monetize these videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.